Hallelujah. So Miss Jawstone always performs barefoot, so she and I made a foot pact. Yes, we did. Uh, to mm -hmm. both go barefoot. Barefoot today. Even yes. though I'm not singing, I'm just going to go for it. You're actually going to get up and sing. We didn't tell you? No. Surprise. No, I'm kidding. Joke, joke, joke. I mean, but I can do Seriously, that. you guys, uh, <laughs> in this day and age of so-called musicians who can't carry a tune without auto-tune, this young lady oh, is the real deal. I mean, your voice is like superhuman. Oh, thank you. So, That's very sweet. Uh, how, I, I know that you were obsessed with soul music from the time you were a wee tot. Yes. Um, how did it all begin for you? What was the catalyst? How did what? How did it begin for you? How what did it song, begin? Like, um, kind of made you obsessed? Okay. Uh, I think when I was little, 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 mm -hmm. um, I would say Anita Baker was something my mum played a lot. So that voice, mm -hmm. hearing that voice, I think um, influenced the way that I put out mine. So my mum played Anita Baker and Melissa Etheridge. And my dad played a lot of James Brown and Linton Kwesi Johnson. And I just, I don't know, I think I just, I like a deep, soulful voice and approach. I guess you are what you eat. So if that's what I was eating, then I guess... Hopefully, I can put out something that will give the same feeling that I got when your, I was young. Well, your voice is so throaty and so emotional and so, like, oh. I don't, I don't want to say deep, that's the wrong word, but... Um, <laughs> deep. Sometimes. Sometimes. It, no, but, but yeah. you know what I'm trying to say, like, very... <laughs> it's, it's just so soulful, I guess. I know Thank you. The most cliched word, but... You've got to mean it. Yeah. That's basically the key. You have so to people mean what say, you, you know, what style of music do you sing? And I, I guess we talk about the word soul, like soul is a genre. Mm -hmm. And it's not really a genre. It's just a feeling. So with this album, it's been lots of different styles and genres all smashed up together. But the feeling, hopefully, if I'm doing it right, will always be soulful. Mm -hmm. It always will tell a story that, that, comes that you from get. You. Yeah, that you feel. That is true. And I think that that's soul. So let's talk about Water for Your Soul. Okay. How did, talk, let's, how did it all come about? Okay, so Water for Your Soul is, um, the title is what I would like this to be. So how I would like you guys to receive the album is I want it to be something that waters you and makes you feel good, makes you feel better, because that is what it does for me. So there's lots of different styles, as I said. Um, there's a lot of world influence. There is a lot of reggae, but it's not a straight reggae record, so I don't want you to think that, because you'll be confused when you hear it. It's, you know, there's R&B, hip-hop, reggae, there's our, ba our backbone. That kind of holds everything together. And then you've got Arabic sarod, there's um, Brazilian beats, there's Irish fiddles, gospel choirs, flamenco guitar, there's like all these different things. And that waters me, it helps me to feel better. So that's why I called it Water for Your Soul, because I'd like it to do that for whoever's listening to it. And, you know, your water might be different. You might like to, I don't know, go for a run at three o'clock in the morning. Yeah, no. Saying your ABCs. No. No? No. Not your water? Not my water. No. But, you know, chocolate might be one of those things. That's yeah, one of mine. Yeah. Yeah. Wine. Sure. Wine. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. What was your writing pre process like for this? And in general, how do you write? Um, this went on for ages. God. I mean, how long have I been writing that? It was probably like five years. I Good wrote God. a few little... But not constantly. You know, like little yeah. dribs and drabs. So I'd go and see my friend Johnny, who's the producer on this and I've written with him since I was like 14 mm -hmm. and I would just you know hang out and we both love a bit of reggae so we were on that tip for a bit and then we like a bit of hip hop too so we're on that tip and we just wrote lots of songs and then after a while we thought god this one's good that one's good let's cut it so we cut it and then I met Damien Marley in another project that I did and he started saying Joss you know you got to do a reggae record and I was like oh I don't know if I can. Mm -hmm. Everyone would be really mad at me, which some of them were. Um, but it encouraged me further. So then I did a bit more. And then I started the Total World Tour, which takes me to really different countries. And I'm doing collaborations with them. So that inspires another thing. So over, over the course of like five or six years, that's, it kind of came together. Lots of different writing sessions. It's good. 
You know, you just, you say what's on your mind and you sing it and you put it in a melody and then you make a song. Oh my God, you make it sound so simple. If it was well, so simple, we'd all be doing it. <laughs> well, some people do it, but it just didn't sound very good. Yeah. 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 So, you know, but we can all do it. <laughs> that's, a, that's a fair assessment, I think, yes. Yeah. That's pretty much it. That's kind of it. Just say what's on your mind. But if you sing it, ta-da! <laughs> a song! <laughs> Congratulations! There's a song. And the Stuck on You video is, uh, I mean, the song is, is, is transporting, but the video, oh my God, <laughs> tell me about shooting it. That was a scary video. Okay, so, so it's underwater. Why is it underwater? Um, the concept of the song, some people feel like this is, you know, it's just a pure love song, but actually the way that I felt about it when I wrote it was, it's like being frustrated with the person that you're in love with and feeling like, God, shit, I wish I wasn't in love with this mm -hmm. one. You know, now you're stuck. And that can be quite suffocating. Um, and it can, yeah, it can, it can not be good in a, in a lot of ways. So hence the feeling of drowning. That's why we came up with that. And I like the end of the video, especially when we all get released, because you've got to have that, haven't you? You've got to have something to look forward to. How did you but, shoot it underwater? Yeah, I, I just... I just tried not to breathe, you know? I was so scared, seriously. Like, I had to go through this training process with the guy that shot it, Gautier, and he is a professional diver. And he says to me, right, you're gonna have an angel with you. And this angel is also supposed to be a professional diver. And when you say like this, um, that means I'm gonna die. Please give me air. And then they will go, shoo, 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 and they'll swim towards you, and they'll shove it in your mouth. And that's basically the job of the angel, is to keep the air. So, you know, you take it out, and you're like, okay, I take my last breath. Okay, I've got rid of it. And then you sing, and you do all this, da 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 And you have your hair free. Yeah, and you're like, oh, I feel so comfortable under here. It's great. And actually, you're thinking, I'm going to die in a minute. So you get to that point, and then they just come rushing in. So I... I got put with this lovely girl. She was very, very sweet. And it's the first day. And I'm a bit scared of this. And I, so I said to her, you know, so what do you do when you're not doing this? And I thought she was going to say something that involved diving. Like, there was a bunch of police divers that yeah, were there. Yeah. And they were all with the other girls. And she goes, oh, I'm a vet. And I was like, oh, OK, you're a vet. So how often do you dive? Oh, you know, a few times few times I was like oh my god oh my god and it was just <laughs> awful the first time I went down I was like I can't I've got to go back up oh it's horrible but anyway yeah the video is very nice <laughs> it's very calm yeah are Ooh. you pretty fearless huh fearless yeah <laughs> I'm full of fear <laughs> no <laughs> I am full of fear but I don't let it stop me in anything because you can't do that that's terrible. That's letting it win, isn't it? That is, like Every yeah. time I get on the plane, I think, oh, my God, please. Me, too. Oof, I hate it. And yet, you would be... It never goes ever. away, does it? Never. Ever. Never. And people have told me the craziest things, like, go skydiving. That'll solve it. I'm like, really? Oh, yeah, that'll, that'll solve, solve it. it. <laughs> exactly. That'll Jumping out of, a out of a moving plane, <laughs> that will totally solve yeah, it. Yeah, that will not know? solve it. So what do you do? You just yeah. kind of zen out? I just hope for the best. You have to just hope. You have to just be like, right, okay. So, fate, or, you know, faith, and I don't know. I just don't think it's my time yet. And when it is, tough shit. Nothing you can do about it, really, that, is there? You is might be on a plane, or you might, we might be here, and this building might go down. You just don't, don't know. Don't go down! Just, I'm throwing it out there. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> but, you know, yeah, let's not throw it out. Let's but suck it back in. your music really is... <laughs> This has got really dark all of a sudden. Move on, move on, move on, move on. But I think, I think if there's one thread that has gone through all your albums, it's, you're, they're so hopeful, they're so uplifting. Got to have a bit of hope, haven't you? Right? Otherwise, there's no point getting up in the morning. You've just got to be like, look, something how, good's going to happen. How do you think today? your music has changed and evolved over, over the years? Um, well, I'd like to think that it's changed. Um, like, it's, it's got more, more involved in it now. Um, when I first started, it, I was very much like... You were a kid. I, I, yeah, I was a kid, so I didn't really know what I was doing. And 
I wasn't in any position to say, well, let's try this or let's mm -hmm. try that, because I didn't know, I didn't have any right, you know, I hadn't learned anything about music. All I knew was how to sing and stay in tune and be emotional, which is like the base things that you need to know as, as a singer. Which most singers don't yeah, know. Yeah, you've got to know that. You've well. got to know how to put yourself out there. But that just comes with being mm -hmm. born. I don't think that comes with lessons. So, um, so that was like the first album. Then the second album, they let me write a little bit. And that was like, okay, so now I get my opinion and mm -hmm. maybe I can even say whether I like a song or whether I don't like a song. At that point, that really wasn't on the table either, you know. So then I got to the third album, and that was the moment where I was like, okay, the, uh, the people that signed me were no longer in the company. So I was like, okay, well, now this is the time. Mm -hmm. You know, I've learned how to write, and I really have lots of ideas on how I'd like things to be produced and what instruments I'd like to use and what sounds I'd like and, you know, how I want it to be mixed. I had an idea. Um, so then I linked up with Raphael Sadiq, who is like an amazing producer. Oh my amazing God, amazing! Yeah, he's beyond. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, that was good company to learn. I, mm -hmm. I was learning from him, but I had to fight, like, to to be able to do that. To say, like, this is a song I want to sing. You know, that was. You kind of have to grab it and be like, no, I will have this freedom, you bastards. You know, I'm gonna have it, whether you like it or not. So I did that, and then from that album, my first two. You know, I was definitely learning, and I had to be, I was kind of quiet. Well, you were, just you were 15, 16, right, yeah. when your first one came out? Yeah. So I don't think anyone is yeah. really, I mean, imagine being that famous when you're, when you're that young. Yeah, no, that And part. having to try to, yeah. You know. Yeah, that was a weird thing. But, you know, you learn on the job. With that job, you learn on the job in front of everyone. Yeah. So if you're going to mess it up, you're going to mess it up big. So you try not to. But, you know, so over the years... I think I've got a bit better at it. And now I can use different instruments and different time signatures and, you know, jump into different worlds of sound. And it's much more fun now. So. I bet it is to yeah. have control. I love to it. Have it's great. And, you know, to be able to be free in something and to not be um, worried about, you know, getting it wrong or disappointing the person that's kind of given you the job type thing. You know what I mean? Or you, you, you read interviews with, with singers and it's so heartbreaking when, when you know... Someone will say, I worked on this album for years and I poured my blood, sweat, and tears into it. And then the one note I get back from the label is there's no single. Yep. Go back to the studio. There's nothing here. Show me the hits. Give me the, no, no, give me the, give me the hits. Give me the I hits. don't want the hits. Leave me alone. Yeah. And they're like, well, why not? Because it's shit. <laughs> Go away. Hits, hits don't make a career. Well, they don't make a life. I mean, God. Okay, yeah, so albums. They always say, you're an albums artist. I'm like, well, what other kind of artist do you want to be? Why would I make an album if I don't want people to listen yeah. to the album? But that was it. Somebody said something to me once. Okay, these are great. This is a good song. These are just album fillers. Like, what is an album filler? Oh, that's just a song that isn't really good enough to be a single. But it's like, well, that's sad. Like, that's kind of, that makes me feel bad about this song now. Like, now, why is that not song good enough to be heard? I don't know, it's a funny way, it's just a different way of making an album, I think. It's a different approach. And I guess the business side of things says, actually, only three songs really get listened to properly. Mm -hmm. And the others mostly don't. But that's only by the masses. I mean, if you think about, we're talking about like McDonald's, that's the masses, you know. But then there's your little restaurant around the corner. Yeah. It's like lovely and it's so gorgeous and it's got, everything to it and the lovely person that's running it and the food is great and you know that's not the masses but it's much nicer you know so I think I'll go with that I don't want to do agreed. that agreed that's scary and when I was I agreed yeah <laughs> and honestly you know when I was when I was growing up and when I first started buying albums and back then it was like tapes yeah you bought a, you bought someone's work you didn't buy yeah. the single yeah there was no such thing no I mean you literally like you listen to it from start to finish, and it's the, the album piece. had a theme and, yeah. and momentum and mm -hmm. a flow to it. Yeah, that's someone's work. Like you say, yeah. it, it's, you know, it's one painting. And that's why I love the vinyl. Like, I think vinyl's making a comeback, so I hear. Oh, it is, yeah. Which I'm quite chuffed about. Because when you drop the needle, you let it go. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't be skipping from track to track. You hear what the artist intended, what they want you to hear. It's like looking at a painting. You, just, you don't just look at one corner. There's a whole thing there. 
And the liner notes. Like, that. do you remember how cool it was to read yes. liner notes? It's, I mean, come on. it's such a nice, it's such a lovely thing to have. It's something so you personal. Know? Like, I feel like hearing your voice mm. is the most personal communication that you can have with someone. Yeah. It really is. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I would say so. What is um, the song on this album that took the most out of you <laughs> to write and perform? Oh, um, probably Stuck on You. I don't know why. I think that that went well. I don't know why. I know what I wrote about. But um, I don't know. There's a, there's a chunk of those songs that are about a certain relationship. And you know mm -hmm. I said it spanned over like five or six years. Well, there's a chunk of those songs that are about a certain chap. Chap. It's always about a chap. And don't then, you love the way she talks? She's chapped. And, <laughs> and she writes about chaps. I love it. Oh, my God. And geezers. <laughs> Chaps if I was geezers. thinking, I'd be like, I'm <laughs> yeah. so psyched, and, and I lads. wrote about this dude. Yeah, no, it's terrible. <gasps> no, you're not the sorry. Queen's English, is it? Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, and then there's a bunch that are about this other chat. So um, <laughs> it depends which one was fresher. There was one song I recorded that didn't make the album because I couldn't do it. It was too personal. Why do we get so emotional? It's so ridiculous, isn't it? But we do. We do. Like, it's but a part of being an artist, for I it. You are? No, you, ha you have an outlet for it. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to have one, I think. You know, well, you've got to have something kind of a to put it into. But that's, yeah, that's my way of, of doing that. And I know you're on tour now. Yes. So how's that going? Okay, so the tour, it is a big tour. It's the total world tour. So that means that no country is missed out. So that takes a while. Um, and that's why the album is, I think, would say that that's why the album has so much world influence because we have a job in each country we go to I make a gig and I make a musical collaboration with somebody from that place hopefully if I'm lucky finding someone that plays music that comes from that place mm -hmm. which is surprisingly difficult actually a lot of places are you know they're just singing western music and that's kind of where they're at um so we do that and we also go and try and find someone that's doing something good something positive and um, that usually leads us to a charity visit, mm -hmm. which is really nice. So it's good. I love the world tour. I think it's, it's probably the most interesting tour that I've ever done. It is definitely the most interesting tour. That sounds awesome. It sounds like it's you're got actually spending time in places as opposed to flying in, yeah. setting up, and then getting yeah. back out. Well, yeah. I mean, you, normally you just you play, and people are like, well, how was it in Japan? And you're like, well, I don't know. You go and tell me. Yeah. I've been there like three times. I have no idea what it's like. You know, you literally, you go from the plane to the car, from the car to the hotel. If you're lucky, you go to sleep. Then you wake up, you get in another car. Then you get out of the car, into the venue, play your gig, out of the venue, into the car, into the hotel. And that's how it works. There's no, like, there's no time to, like, feel what's going on mm -hmm. in this place and look around. And I notice the most that I see in these scenarios, if I'm doing a festival and it's an outside gig, I get to kind of see, like, look at this. There might be a mountain or, you know, an ocean or something mm -hmm. beautiful like that. Festivals are great for that because they really show you, like, a piece of this land. Um, but now we're kind of taking a little bit longer. Just a little bit. Two days. Nice. Two days, three days. It's better than an evening. So it's good. It's a bit mad, though. Honduras. Go to Honduras. Really? Yes. It's gorgeous. So I said, I'm going to go to Honduras, as I am everywhere. But um, the reaction I get for certain countries, also Lebanon, same, lovely. The reaction I get when I say these countries, people are like, oh, no, you can't go there. You're going to get murdered. You're going to get killed. It's not going to be good. You need to take a security guard, blah, 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 blah. This goes on and on. After having this advice, maybe we should have taken a security guard because God knows we had no idea. But we did it anyway. We just thought, you know what, it sounds so nice. And, um, so I don't know. When, when we got on the plane, I said to my brother, Harry, he comes with me and films stuff. Um, we kind of looked at each other like, God, I hope it's not true what they said. Because You're like, are we crazy? We're on the plane right now. <laughs> and actually, we haven't got anything going on mm -hmm. there. But um, we got there and it was the most gorgeous. I mean, we weren't in the middle of the city. We were out in the country a bit. Oh my God, what a beautiful place. It's called Tela. That's the place we went. That's T-E-L-A. And they have this wonderful um, 
kind of resort. It's like on a golf course, mm -hmm. you know, and it's right by a national park that's protected and it's just lovely. And the guy was like, it was totally empty. We were the only ones there, really. He was like, you know, it's not good because the press kind of make out that this place is so, so dangerous and no one wants to come. So because no one wants to come, the tourist situation is not really bringing in any money and it's not going good. So go. Go to Honduras. And you know what? You know what? As go to Tela. As we said yesterday, we mm. had a, a guest on, and she and I live in the same neighborhood in Brooklyn that is considered the safest. It's actually like the least safe. Right. So, exactly. Because everyone, you know, you assume yep. a certain thing, mm -hmm. and it's yep. tons of break-ins. The guy so. that was working there, he goes, I lived in Miami for 10 years. Mm -hmm. He said, I would no way walk down the street at night in Miami. I wouldn't. And... Um, where he is in Honduras, the area that he's in, he's like, I'd walk down the street at 2 a.m. here. So it really depends where you are. You know, you've got to take advice from the people that live there. You know, and be smart. That there every day. And be smart, yeah. And if you're a girl, don't walk around at night anyway. I don't care where you are. Just don't do it. That's just good advice. Yeah. Sorry, but we're just not as strong. <laughs> it is what it is. Physically. And now we have time for some audience questions from yeah. the left. Stage, stage left. Hi, Hello, Joss. I'm Crystal. Nice Hello. to meet you. Thanks nice for meet coming. You. I've always loved your music. It's resonated with my soul. Oh. But my question is, um, so Gwen Stefani always said, and no doubt, there was like, Don't Speak was the song that took her band around the world. Oh, yeah. What do you think is that song or that album for you? Oh, well, definitely it's the first two albums because the first two albums is where I had help, you know, not musical help, but I had help from a, a major label. So the major was like, right, you're the girl that we're pushing right now. And that is exactly what happened. When you get pushed by them, it is what it is. So that would be what songs, Right to Be Wrong is a song. Got to sing that. Um, unfortunately, You Had Me. <sighs> that song, man, it, it, that haunts me, that song. Um, but you know. Well, how many times have you performed it now? Can you count? That song? Yeah. Oh, so many times. But I kind of tried to leave that one out. Um, Super Duper Love is the one that the people like, you know. They like the simple ones, hey. What can you do? And security! People call out that song. I played in my Zumba class. Do you really? In your Zumba class? <laughs> it's a ballad. I, I tore it down with security. Oh, oh my God, do you? Are you serious? Oh my God, do people cry and stuff? It's kind of depressing, man. <laughs> it's a release. It's a release. Security. Oh, wow. Oh my God. That's amazing. Wow. <laughs> and that was on the second album. So there you go, first and second. When I got to the third, I started saying to them, leave me alone, I want to do my own thing. And they were like, fuck you then. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, that's what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on seven now, they're still saying that. <laughs> hey, Joss, how you doing? Uh, love the green. I was a hey. dig of festive spirit, yeah. for sure. Um, <laughs> First of all, mad talent, you know, to be a singer in this day and age without the gimmicks, respect, Thank truly. You. Thank you. Um, nice. You know, going back to the world tour, what do you do to keep yourself from being exhausted? A lot of singers and bands yeah. say they do a lot of traveling, they only hit up a couple of places. Yeah. What you're doing is a gigantic undertaking, and again, yeah. respect. It's incredible Thank you. what you're doing, really. Thank you. Um, you know, it's hard actually because I do get, I was saying to the guitar player the other day, I said, you know what? You just have to accept that you're going to get sick at the end of each leg, or at least at the end of each second leg. You know, so we do it in like chunks of a month here, and then we go home, and then we go and do another month, and we go home for a bit. But you just, you just get sick. You're on a plane all the time. You're tired. Um, and fitting in all the bits and bobs that I like to do when I'm there, oh, it's tiring. But you have to look after yourself. So for me, when I'm at home... I might have a glass of wine, I might have a rolly or two at night, you know, I'm just chilling. It's like I'm on holiday when I'm at home. But when I get out, because I can't, I can't have a drink and sing, it just doesn't work. Thank God it doesn't work, because that keeps me well, you know. So I, that, that means I rarely drink when I'm on the road, and I rarely smoke. So I do think that those two, those two things, keeping them out, does help, because you won't have time to sleep, you know. Sometimes you do, though, you know. It's hard, though. Yeah. Worth it. Hi. <laughs> I love you so much and I adore your music here. <laughs> and um, it always caught my attention that 
I feel like you've been the same person yeah. throughout the years of your career and your music. Mm. I don't know if this is if you think it's a good or bad thing, yeah. but um, it has been um, in between the same styles always. Mm. And so I wonder, <laughs> in your bad days, you know, when 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 you're feeling down or whatever, what is that that you do? What is that that your your soul really drinks? to keep on going mm. on a career that is so probably unstable that we don't know if it's going to end, you know, tomorrow. And to not let also the, the industry influence you because mm. it's so visible that you, that you kept yourself together yeah. through the years in, in such a vulnerable profession. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Good point. Um, God, I think you just... What's a, yeah, I'm trying to find a way to explain it to you in a short way. Um, it is a bit of a bugger, this profession, because you get pulled around a lot and there's a lot of people that would like you to do something that you don't want to do and things like that. And that is a bit of a drain and it can stress you out. But on those down days where I feel like, oh, God, I don't want to get up. I'm tired. My life. We all have those days. We all do. Um, And you have to make a choice. You have to make a choice. No, I'm actually just going to do my best and be happy and continue on with the day and try to be grateful for whatever it is that, that's going on in your life. And that's it. It's kind of like positive mental attitude constantly. You've got to kind of kick that in. Um, and there are times where you feel like, oh, this is, this is a world of assholes, you know. <laughs> And it is, it is. Like, there's not many really nice ones. I hate to say that, but... Yeah, you just want to go for a walk in the field with your dogs. But you're so far away from that, you can't, you know. And the job does take you into lots of cities and stuff where you can't find any nature and all that. But it's still there, you know. You're still breathing. You can still go home, you know, at any point. You know, if I got fed up today, if I got fed up right now, I have the choice. I can sit here and continue this interview, or I can leave. I have the choice. And I don't think people take that as seriously as they should. So often I hear people saying, oh, but I can't, I've got a choice, I've got to do it. You haven't got to do anything. So as long as you remember that, keep that as close to you as possible, you know, you can hopefully avoid sadness. I don't know. Kind of a quick answer, but no, that's a great answer. Got the and we have time for one more. Hi, <laughs> love, Joss. Hello. Your music really creates a great picture that the listener can definitely, when they're listening to your music, can see a portrait. And also, your beautiful album cover is a beautiful portrait as well. Are there any artists, like visual artists, that you um, that you feel um, helps you create your work? Visual artists. Do you know, oh, I wish I could tell you the names of these people. Um, recently, okay, I'm a big fan of Instagram. That's like, I love it. I do. I love it. And I wish that I could take amazing photos. So I'm always constantly trying to be like that photographer that's like amazing. But, you know, it doesn't work so well for me. But I try and I really enjoy it. And so recently I, um, I joined National Geographic on Instagram. Oh, my God. The pictures are amazing. Aren't they amazing? So, I don't know. Those guys. Whoever those guys are. So, the lady that did my artwork, we did a competition on Facebook. So, I told those that are watching on Facebook, I said, okay, um, I made this album. I tried to explain what the album sounded like, which was a bit difficult. Um, and I told them the title. And we got hundreds of people sending in artwork, and it was beautiful. The lady that won this was called Ophie Hastings. And she was just, like, lovely. So I called her up, and I said, hey, I want to use your artwork. She goes, oh, I'm so glad that I, that I entered the competition because I just saw it last night, and I just I spent the day, and I was just going for it. And so she really, like, that... What I love about it, not only do I love it because it just looks beautiful and it kind of is the person that I, I want to be that girl... You know, um, I love that that's her first thought. And I think with making songs, I always like to use my first thought. So I don't spend days and days writing a song. I don't even spend hours and hours. I just 
write down what I'm thinking at the first moment. And I like that. And it's cool that she did the same thing. So we get to see a piece of her soul, you know. I don't know. I love it. It all kind of comes together, doesn't it? You know, lots of different pieces of art can come together to make one. And I like that, too. So it's cool. And for tour dates, please go to jostone.com. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you, darling. You're adorable. Thank and you. honestly, as this gentleman said in the front row, props to you for doing it without the gimmicks and on pure talent. It is seriously, thank we were you. just talking about how rare it is in, in, in this industry anymore Aww, to actually you. meet someone so nice. who has the chops. Oh, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.